go, the ninth time around for both. Dundalk have won the League Cup four times already. Shamrock Rovers just it twice, but they are holders. One of three cup competitions that they won last season. And their most recent win in this stadium five days ago. Two wonderfully even match sides. Dundalk top of the league by six points from Cork City. You have a game in hand. Shamrock Rovers in fourth, having lost to Cork in the last league game. A 90th minute winner from their forward defender, Dan Murray. This will be an interesting one. Cup finals generally tend to be. Seventh meeting of the season between these two, and of the previous six, Dundalk have won three. Shamrock Rovers just the one. That was Monday night under Pat Fenlon, who was Shamrock Rovers' boss, hasn't lost to Dundalk, but then he's only met them for twice. He's yet to beat Stephen Kenny as a manager in the League Cup. Two meetings, and Kenny got the better twice, whilst he was in charge of Derry City. from Richie Tal. 13 goals so far this season. Mark Rossiter, who won the League Cup with Bowes in 2009. The only time that Pat bellin has got his hands on this particular trophy. All the successes he's had in this career. Simon Madden's throw. Quick flick on, which came from Sean O'Connor. It's in the side that won this competition last year as they did a cup trouble. They're away by Rory Higgins, and that'll be a free kick. Well, Stephen Kenny has four League Cup wins in his career, all with. Derry City, and if he wins this, he matches the record of Turlock O'Connor, who won five. Unbeaten in League Cup finals. Interesting, Will, how they're matching up early on. The ball's going to be lively on this surface. Um, it's going to be a quick game to start with. I think there'll be plenty of turnovers and, and mistakes made. And I think certainly that people putting their foot in could make for an interesting start. Coming together of Jason McGuinness and David McMillan. Both teams will want to impress early on that they're here to, to win the, the League Cup and um, certainly the first 10 or 15 minutes is normally quite feisty. They say that uh, familiarity breeds contempt. Well, they've really gone at each other so far. Fabulous campaign being had by Towel. The free kick to be taken by Dan Massey. McMillan won the free kick. He'll be a prime candidate in the middle for this free kick to be sent in. Massey having to reposition. It's the two goals this season in the league. Can he set one up here? Can he score on? Oh, you bet he can! Four minutes played, an explosive start. What a brilliant goal! That is the most wonderful strike for a cup final, certainly in the first five minutes. I wondered whether it's going to try and test the goalkeeper by putting the one across the face of goal. He's a young goalkeeper, not made many appearances this year, but he's gone and put it in the top corner. And I don't think any goalkeeper would have been able to stop that one. What a sensational free kick for Dave Massey. His third goal of the season, his first in the League Cup. And that was an absolute belter. Scored in Dundalk's last league game, the 5 0 win over Derry. And that was absolutely sensational. Well, I'm not sure whether that's going to settle things down or make it even more feisty. 
It's a great start for the home side. It's just what the fans would have, uh, would have wanted. And that will mean... By the end of the evening, that out of the 41 League Cup finals, only two will have been goalless. Pat Fenlon winning this as a manager in 2009 when Bohemians won down at Waterford 3-1. He played in two Cup finals in the League Cup, lost them both. Bose falling to Derry in 1992, Shelburne to Sligo in 1998, both by a goal to nil. That was back in the days when the League Cup was either played on St. Stephen's Day or New Year's Day. In went Shepherd, who went down, free kick to Shamrock Rovers, but Dundalk already lead by the scoreline in which they beat Shamrock Rovers in the 1987 final. That was refereed by Pat Kelly. A penalty from Martin Murray just before half-time. Dundalk have only won the League Cup once instead. 1990 beat Derry on penalties when Paul New was on the score sheet for them. Decent float in by Sean O'Connor and flicked away again. Decent interest by uh, Rory Higgins. And what great success he's had in this competition. Five winners' medals, all with Derry City. Four of those under Stephen Kenny, the other one under John Robertson when Kenny was away. Having a stint in Scottish football as Pat Fennon would have. Ronan Finn slipping in on Daryl Horgan who lost a League Cup final to Derry in 2011 whilst in the colours of court. Do you know what, Will? I think both, both managers will have been impressing on their teams not to give simple free kicks away in and around the box. Both teams have got deadly set ball uh, play takers. Uh, Dane Massey certainly just uh, impression on that one. Hoban came in on Highland and made life very difficult for him there. But what a cracking free kick, right underneath the crossbar, in off the bar, and a fantastic effort to beat Craig Highland at his near post. Absolutely sensational. He will take the throw himself here. Only one senior cup final he's played in before. That the Satanta Sports Cup final earlier this year. Beat by a goal to nil by Sligo Rovers. Stephen McPhail down injured. Long career in England with Leeds United, Barnsley, Cardiff. UEFA Cup semi finalist with Leeds in 2000 when they were beaten by Galatasaray. Just stretched. 34 now. Yeah, it looks as though he, he, he took a bang on his on his thigh there, but um, you know he's looking in quite a bit of pain and discomfort just below us here. Uh, it'll be important to to Pat Fenlon and Sean Rose that he stays on the pitch. I think he'll be a very important player. Keep calm heads. They've fallen behind one nil. He's been in this situation many many times. It will be important for, for him to impress on some of the younger players, not to panic. He did have a, an injury ravaged time in his career earlier also. Came at the start of the year from Sheffield Wednesday. Good throw by Massey. Short for David McMillan. Five goals so far this season. One goal away from equaling the club record in the League Cup. Massey strike. What a start he's had to this cup final. You know, when you play on this surface, it does accentuate the uh, the injuries that you get as well, the bangs, it, uh, it can certainly put a shudder down you. But he's come back onto the pitch, so it looks as though he's moving a little bit freer. Header away from Shamrock Rovers captain today, Connor Kennett. League Cup runner-up in 2005, which was the first live League Cup final, and this is our 10th today. Excellent breaking from Carl Shepherd and blocked by Massey, who's appeared everywhere and pretty much done everything so far. Sean McGrover's first corner of the game. Came from 
These battles from corners and set piece will be intriguing. Both teams got good height and power. Shepard coming in from the penalty spot, went to the back post, and that was his downward header. And he just wasn't picked up, but he wasn't able to get enough power in the final effort. Yep, simple movement, made his way towards the back post uh, with a free header. From there, I think he uh, he would have expected to have done a little bit better. I don't know whether he went for goal. Possibly better putting it back across uh, across the goal. Five goals for Shepard this season, three in the league. And the brace he scored in the cup here on Monday night. But both managers have kept their sides fresh without really weakening their starting 11s. Stephen Kenny has won every trophy by the Satanta Sports Cup. And Dundalk were beaten in this year's final. Has a fantastic record in this competition and always wants to win every trophy. League Cup is as much a priority as the FAI Cup and so on. Jason McGuinness twice a League Cup winner. They didn't play in the final in 09, still got a medal for it against uh, Waterbury United down at the RSC. Featured heavily in last year's decider where they turned round the 2012 defeat at the hands of Drogheda. Well, you could argue they did that in the Santana Sports Cup final a few months before that, and then some. McPhail, long and okay again, trying to pick out Shepard. Feel Marty Waters couldn't quite be located, but it might run through all the way to Madden on this near side. Connor. Yeah, I like some of the positions that uh, Sean O'Connor's taking at the moment. He's, he's starting out on the right, but he's roaming, getting in those areas in, in behind the, uh, the Dundalk midfield. And if he picks it up and is allowed to turn, he can, uh, he can get his strike away on goal. Important that Dundalk pick that run up. Strong head away by Kenner. Good ball over the top, McMillan chasing after it. It was Massey's first ball. And the slight slip by McGuinness. He stayed down, I can tell you, in the corner on the near side on the left. Shepard just missing out in the air. Richie Towell to try and set things running again. It was launched up by Gannon and out. And McGuinness still struggling. He looks as though he just jarred his knee there on, uh, on landing when dealing with that, uh, that ball going into the channel there. And, you know, that, that, that's what it does. It's, um, it's shuddering, it's a hard surface, it, uh, it makes for a, a lively encounter, but um, you can certainly pick up one or two injuries on it. And I know having worked with Jason, he doesn't like this type of surface. Well, Shamrock Rovers, when they played here early in the year in the Satanta Sports Cup semi-final day, tried playing it a bit higher. A lot of it wasn't at ground level. Lost both legs to Dundalk. New year, new manager here now, though. O'Connor gets the throw. Yeah, when you do play a passing game on it, you've got to be so precise with it because if, if it's out by half a yard, it's very, very difficult to uh, to stop it running away from you. This out by Horgan. That'll be another free kick. The assistants, by the way, Alan Sherlock on this near side, Damien McGrath on the far. Goal line officials, which we have in this final, to Morse Conley and Derek Tomney, and the fourth official is Ken Hennessy. 
that's Derek Tomney who's looking after this side of the pitch. Decent swing in, almost went all the way through, flicked away by Gabriel Sava in the Dundalk goal. Put him under some duress. Still having to shield his eyes from the sun. It was an awkward trajectory, but he got there. Shepard, support from O'Connor, with that teasing free kick in. Couldn't poke it through towards Waters this time, but he'll take the story up. And it will be handball. Funny you mentioned about the sun as well. I see Gabriel Sava there. He's looking right into the sun. He hasn't got a cap on. He's shielding his arms, his eyes with his hands all the time. You know, for me as a manager, I'd be telling players, put it on him. Slides clearance from his opposite number. Highland managed to find Craig somehow, but put straight out by Patrick Craig. A Scottish Cup winner with St Johnston, having previously been a losing finalist for Paul Kirk in 09. Eleventh time that these sides have faced off in this competition. There's only been one draw between these two. The Dorker won five, Rovers four. Forward by Finn, just evaded Shepard. Waters certainly put his back into it. Has got the free kick for Shamrock Rovers too. Shot by Gatlin. Again, a little niggly, niggly tackle, some tussles there, um, some needless free kicks being given away. Quick one, Waters was found swiftly, side netting for a corner, but what great quick thinking by Stephen McPhail to get it going down that left-hand side. And Shamrock Rovers almost got the breakthrough that way. It is, yeah, variations as well. I think that's important. That's something that Stephen McPhail will do. He'll recognise that uh, there are times on the pitch to quicken it up. And uh, that was one there which could have got something from. Trying to get a flick on at the near post. It came from Kenner. Byrne went in for it also, but couldn't quite connect. Well, they're looking to make things happen. Ball's been put out due to another injury. Gannon this time. Lovely flick it came at the near post from Kenner and well, goalkeeper and defender collided. And Gabriel Sava didn't care if it was friend or foe. No one was getting in his way. Resigned at the start of the year from St. Patrick's Athletic, where he won his second league title. He'd done previously two years earlier with Shamrock Rovers. He was beaten in this League Cup final with them. A shot loss at Tala to Drogheda two years ago. Water slid down. Sean McRovers get the free kick again and a chance to move further people up once more. Quick by McPhail for O'Connor. And Waters just lost the run of the ball, but O'Connor's got it back again. Lovely chip, just too high for Shepard. And Hoban will let it run. Shepard track back, but he's given the free kick away. Yeah, a couple of phases of play there where we you know, the ball has just got away, it's whether it's bubbled up or it's, it's lively. Players can't get a hold of it at this moment in time. It's just making the game fragmented. Um, Bitty and Bobby, no real pattern to it at the moment. Massey launched away long by Madden, aimed again for Shepard, and he put the pressure on again on Mark Rossiter. Surprisingly, he's only won this trophy once with Bowes five years ago. He's put it out for the corner kick. Rover's beginning to push up, put the pressure back on again. And that League Cup success for Rossiter was, of course, Sunday today's opposing manager, Pat Bennett. 
in by O'Connor. Shepard again made a good movement on the far post, went over the head of Kenna at the near. Morgan with a chance to launch it long, only McMillan to aim for. And how well he's been among the goals so far this season. Goal scorers for Dundalk, each hit double figures, which in terms of the league, that's across all competitions by the way, quite a rarity. It's phenomenal to be honest, you, you look at it and um, you know they haven't relied just on the on the strike force, they have been shared around, it means players who have been out of the side have come in and shown a good uh, responsibility of, of uh, when they are out the, out the side good attitude and, uh, and done the business when they've been given the chance. It's just about kept in by Massey, but at the expense of possession. O'Connor covered by Massey. On the way by Kenner to find Shepard. It was very much a no man's land. He was all alone. Nobody in a gold shirt within 10 yards of him. And that was the number 10. Found himself losing out to a combination of Horgan and Massey. The Rovers tried it down the left hand side. Shepard. Craig got enough of a flick on to find Madden. It's O'Connor again. Shepard waiting in the middle. Can Craig supply a probing ball? Well, no, he can't. At least that was answered quickly. Waters. Just outside the area. Takes a tumble with Gartlin in close proximity. And a telling off from Graham Kelly but no more than that. It might just have been the presence of Gannon behind, but it was Gartland who was brought to speak to Kelly. Waters wins the free kick. Well, that was a combination there of, one, of, of the first time where one team has had possession, good possession. They've not panicked and given it away. They've come out, they've gone out the other side until they've created a 1v1 situation, and that's when Marty Waters has gone at the, the, the defender and forced a free kick. It was good play by Shamrock Rovers. O'Connor teeing it up. Shepard also there. Rebounded off the wall. O'Connor this time trying to find a way through. Kenner with another excellent flick and McPhail also. And McPhail couldn't fire through Rory Higgins. Monstrously successful when it comes to this competition. He's won the FAI Cup twice as well and the Satanta Cup once. Under Pat Fenland. And there'll be a bit of bother here, maybe. It's a very heavy fall for Richie Towell. I don't think there'll be a card, though, from Graham Kelly. No, and I think because it was in front of the Dundalk dugout, I think a lot's been made of it, and uh, I think uh, the referee has, has probably made the right decision there, to be honest. I think uh, Byrne did go for the ball. Yes, it was mistimed. Yes, it's a free kick. But I don't think we want to be going down the route of uh, willy-nilly yellow cards, which then all of a sudden puts him under pressure later on in the game. Well, some busy conversations. The fourth official, Ken Hennessy's got involved in so on. Good break by Waters, covered by Ward. Massey in the way. Higgins, good play aimed for Horgan, but just couldn't quite keep it in play. 
No, it's been, it's been congested throughout the game in the middle of the park, and I think, uh, you know, we have to use a bit of width in this uh, at this area. In this park, I think that both teams have got joy out wide. They've got good players who can go and uh, go at players 1v1, 2v1. Has to be moved from that middle area. Cracking open League Cup final so far, this has been. The size of the club and the folly of support that they always bring. It's a surprise that the last senior trophy was as far back as 2002. The year of two FAI Cup finals, it was the transition year. You might just remember the last time they won the league, 1995. The three-way battle for the title on the closing day, and they were the outsiders. They were the champions by the end of it. That's a lovely flick on, Horgan released by Hobart. And the bounce just evaded him, otherwise he was in. Massey waiting on the edge of the area, and he'll keep waiting. And he'll get to it now. Towel back for Rossiter. Oh, there looked to be a late challenge on Massey. But Graham Kelly again was happy enough with the intervention of Craig. Yeah, Simon Madden just slipping there on the surface. Almost got uh, Darrell Horgan away and in on goal. Fortunately, he wasn't able to read the bounce. It is the type of surface that it does encourage mistakes and that games can be won on people's mistakes here. Whether you take those chances or not. Well, Stephen Kenny was involved in the last nil-nil League Cup final and that record will stay. 2006 beat the Shelburne, managed by Pat Fenlon at the Brandywell. It was Ryder Cup week that was. Quick throw, Waters, lovely flick, try to find Shepard. Hawken long away, again just over the head of Hoban. They've proven a swift counter-attacking side this season, that's why Hoban has launched in with so many goals. Gartland got the better of Waters. Massey couldn't get it away, instead he gave it away to Finn. Shepard dived in again to win the corner kick for Shamrock Rovers. And we haven't seen a huge amount of Ronan Finn so far in this League Cup final, but beginning to emerge now. Yeah, and I was thinking just on the angle, go and hit it. Go on from there, he was, uh, he was 18 yards out. No real area for, she for uh, Shepard to manoeuvre in. Go and hit it. Floated in by Connor again, and they're all arriving at the near post, and it's 1-1, and it's Jason McGuinness to equalise. Good response from a set piece, getting the first head on it and then reacting to the second ball. Jason McGuinness was first to react. It's a good equaliser. They have looked vulnerable from set pieces. Shamrock Rose on a couple of occasions have had a, the first touch. This time they've managed to go and um, put the ball in the back of the net. A bit of hesitation in the Dundalk defence and a bobbled around at that far post. Lovely distribution from O'Connor. The head on look to come very strongly at the far side from Luke Byrne. And in pop for his first League Cup goal of the season and his third in all competitions, Jason McGuinness. Yeah, and I don't think Stephen Kenner will be too happy with the defending there. They did have a warning earlier on after five minutes. I think there was a free header at the back post. Again, simple movement. Burn at the far post this time. Not the biggest, but he, do, he, is, he isn't bad in the air, as he's just proven. And again, a free touch for the second one for, for Jason McGuinness. So very ragged at the back there. Something that is uh, is un Dundalk like. And it's cost them on this occasion. They'd only conceded one goal in the run to the cup final, and that was in the two and away win over Derry. 
Beat Bray 3-0 away back in the May Bank Holiday weekend. Beat Wexford 5-0 in the semi-final when McMillan scored twice to boost this year's tally to five. Shamrock Rovers beating Bohemians in the semi-final. 2-0 away, beat Cork in the quarter-final, 2-0 at home. And draw it at 2-1 in their opening round tie. Excellent release, just too far for Gannon, and Hoban was waiting in the middle, completely unmarked. Yeah, Gannon will make them runs from, uh, from right fullback. He's got license to roam forward, he likes to get into the final third. And if they don't, uh, if they don't pick those runs up from, from Gannon, he can cause problems. But it surprised me at the moment that Dundalk haven't tested the goalkeeper more by putting the balls into the box from wide areas. I don't remember two balls going in, and uh, I think with me, young goalkeeper, not played much, getting tested. And two defenders have now scored in this League Cup final. It's been a good response from Shamar Rose from falling behind, though. After five minutes, it can be unsettling for sure, but, um, you know, they've taken the game to, to Dundalk. They've forced one or two free kicks, some set pieces, and got themselves back in the game. Dundalk have barely had a chance since the goal. They bounce back in their league loss. Away to St. Patrick's and Lennox with that fine 5-0 victory over Derry City. That was the most recent league game. Summer Brothers losing away to Cork City most recently in the league, which was uh, a bit of a slip for them, but Turner's Cross is never easy, particularly the way it's packed these days. Away to Bohemians next Tuesday. Most recent league success. We uh, saw their 1-0 home victory over... Uh, Quite honestly, awful Sligo Rovers, whose manager John Coleman departed for Accrington during the week. And Accrington today have beaten Northampton five goals to four. Wouldn't mind if this one did. Launch long, Shepard went for the first time strike, right across goal, but good awareness from the former Reading striker. Yeah, it was a testing ball, it was over the head of Rossiter. Someone is in his eyes, he didn't deal with it properly. Good run by Shepard, and uh, he'll feel as though if he, uh, he has a chance on goal, go and strike it. Two goals the other night will have given him confidence. Why not? Away by Kenner. Good close control from... Richie Towell, who, like the two managers today, has had his spell in Scotland, where no doubt a lot was learned. Morgan might have had a few options over at the far side. Gannon had a bit of room, but was obscured by the bodies in the centre of the pitch, so back to his keeper he went instead, Gabriel Sava. Fourth League Cup final for the Dundalk custodian. He's featured in four of the last five. One one and lost one with Jordan. Lost the other with Monaghan. That's a great ball inside. And Hoban striking on the turn. Craig Highland got down very well to save. Hoban on the brink of his 20th goal in the season. Yeah, that's more like Dundalk that, uh, that has done well this season. It was good play, good setup play in the middle from initially from Hoban. They got it out wide. Ball was put into the box where uh, Hoban had continued his run and he got on the end of a, of a cross there. I think they can get some joy getting at the full-backs for Shamrock Rovers. I think the uh, the player's got to be spread that little bit more. Dangerous balls coming into the box will cause the, uh, the, the back four problems. Connor centred it, couldn't quite find a way through to Shepard, but he's enjoying a free reign up front so far this afternoon. Come close a couple of times. Won't come close this time though. 
loose distribution to roll it out. fell to set things rolling again for Shamrock Rovers. 333rd time that these two have faced off. And they're still not done for this season. 13th of October, the next time they meet. Their last league meeting of the season. It's ran through Shepard to pick it up and lots of Room for Madden on this near side, but he wasn't spotted. Massey will flick it away. Quick release, try to again release Horgan down the middle. Good quick thinking, fine baller was by Higgins, but it needed to be a bit finer. Yeah, it's where this surface really causes problems. If you half it said half a yard out, then it generally doesn't find its target, it runs away from you or bounces off. Your passing has got to be so precise on here. And the only way that these two could have possibly played each other anymore was if they'd been drawn in the Leicester Senior Cup and the President's Cup, but I think probably eight is enough. Here goes Matt, and that's out. Anyway, if you think playing eight times competitive in league season is bad, I work in the Belgian league these days, and the bottom two have to play a five-legged playoff. Don't know who came up with that, but he was a masochist. Higgins. Lovely flick. Came from McMillan. Couldn't release. Taolu was floating up front in the same way that Shepard is here, and he could have let it go for the corner. Instead, he's going for something a bit more pointed up front. And he's won the free kick off Garthland too. He's given a few free kicks away. Do you know what? It's a needless one as well. He's going nowhere. He's shepherding him out of the box. He's tried to win it when there was no right for him to win it, and it's given away a free kick in a dangerous area where we know that balls can be loaded onto the onto the goalkeeper. Sun's in his eyes, haven't dealt with set pieces well this first half an hour or so, and it's a needless free kick. Rovers have already scored from a set piece so far this evening. They've sent six into the area waiting this free kick from Sean O'Connor. Huge amount of movement, Kenneth try to get the flick on again. Nice and composed, back by McPhail to try and get things moving again with Madden launching at long. I think Shamrock Rovers have had the better of it since they fell behind. There's lots of room again for Madden on this near side and he's just not being spotted by his colleagues. He's not, and I think he can be a, a massive player for Shamrock Rovers, so you'd be looking, if you're a middle midfield man, to try and spread it wide, because he does give you that option. Madden's been picked out this time by Finn, who made a good break towards the edge of the box. He's up there with Shepard. Rory Higgins got the better of him this time. Out by Horgan for another throw. That was just held up due to a second ball in the pitch, but that's been put to bed now. Not many options open for Matt at that time, but Finn, always useful, still going. Nice chip cross. 
good opportunity as O'Connor was arriving in the middle, but he couldn't get the shot away. Towel looked to be held. Waters, excellent flick coming again from Patrick Craig. It was too far away from Madden and the physicality of Morgan won the day, but not the throw. Great play by Finn, this was. Well, it was, and, uh, and again, Shamrock Rose have, have maintained that pressure that they're putting on, on Dundalk, and it's difficult for Dundalk to get out of their own half at the moment. And he didn't shirk out of the challenge. Lovely nutmeg, fine little chip. And the last Kenny Fenlon Cup final was goalless. We've had two already before half-time. Lineswood's doing a very good marking job, and O'Connor who sends it in. He's headed straight back out again by Hoban, who's trying to latch onto that. It was a back pass which was skipped away by Madden. Finn found himself isolated. And five from Dork men around him between him and the next colleague, and that was Shepard. In the way the game's play, shaping up, though, it's as if that uh, you know, Dundalk have took the early lead. They've got the majority of their fans here. There's almost an expectation for them to go on and win a game. They haven't won a, a cup final or a trophy since uh, 2002. Is that expectation level just starting to, to seep in a little bit? It's a good one over the top. Shepard, very, very good clearance away by Mark Rossiter. It's all right having a cup final in, in your home your home backyard, but uh, there's a pressure there that it brings. Exquisite play, brilliantly done by Waters. Tried to get it to run through and it was away. How did you find uh, cup finals as a manager then? Quite successful over here, to be honest. <laughs> they were, uh... I mean the build-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were great. Thanks, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was one of those where you, you know, it is a special occasion and you've just got to try and keep the, the players as level-headed as possible. Um, amongst the staff as well, there's plenty of expectations, there's excitement amongst the fans and uh, and that can get to you subconsciously and um, as it gets close to kick off, you know, that can all have a toll on its uh, on, on your, your energy levels. Sligo got the ball rolling, you remember, by winning the League Cup in 2010 against Monaghan. A few bits of silver after that. Yeah, I don't think that when there's a chance to win some silver, I don't think you should take it lightly at all. And um, you now, again, for me on a cup final, you try and play your strongest side for me. Well, arguably, second choice goalkeeper apart, both sides of kept it as strong as they can for this 41st League Cup final. Only the second time that these two have met in this decider and... First time when it's been largely an end-of-season showpiece that they've uh, faced off against each other. Needed to get a bit of extra momentum towards the end of this first half. Yeah, I was just going to say there, we're coming up to the to the end of the first half. I think Pat Fenlon will be a, the more more pleased of a manager going in at half time. Had a lot more of the ball, a lot more possession. They've been quicker to things, and I think they've uh, they've shown that in in possession wise, they will have the fair share of it. Ball forward by McPhail. Wards close control, just beyond Waters. It's perfectly fine for Sean Gannon. Anton Dork round off the half and a high. 
having started on the same. Well, given away poorly. Shepard's the only one up front at the moment. McPhail holding on. O'Connor has made it up there now, and it's a free kick the other way. Two out of minutes, by the way, at the end of this first half. I think that phase of play there has just summed up what, what's happened, really. First half for Dundalk. Now they give the ball away needlessly. Uh, Chamart Rovers intercept, and, and then a, a free kick is given away needlessly, and it's, it's causing untold pressure. John O'Connor with the chance to get the cross in, but just elongated. You talk about arguably both teams have picked their strongest side. I think um, Chris Shields is a, is a big miss from that midfield there. I don't think they've dominated the midfield. I think it's Charlotte Rose have probably had the better of this first half in the, in the middle area. And I think, you know, someone like uh, Chris Shields has really gone and stamped his authority in there this season. He's an unsung hero at times, and he, um, you know, I think you can tell a difference today. Yeah, Chris Shields, Curtis Byrne, Darren Meenan on the bench, and first choice keeper Peter Cherry for Dundalk. Shamrock Rovers with Shane Robinson, Kieran Kilduff, Gary McCabe. Among their regulars, who are spectators for now. Shepard with the dummy, but Sean O'Connor couldn't quite latch on. No chance for a late Dundalk break either. They went in front through Dane Massey after four minutes, and it was a really good start. That fantastic free kick, a real thunderbolt. They cannoned it off the bar, and Dundalk looked to be on the front foot, but Shamrock Rovers responded themselves from a set piece, an excellent sent in by Sean O'Connor and put home by Jason McGuinness. So half-time in the 2014 League Cup final, it's Dundalk 1, the 2014 EA Sports League Cup final. If Stephen Kenny were a club, he would be the second most successful one in the history of this competition. He's won it four times, as it is the second most successful club at Dundalk. And they too aiming for their fifth along with Kenny today. Derry City, top of the pile by the way with ten. And they won a huge chunk of those under Kenny also. I think Stephen Kenny's possibly made the right decision there with the, the half-time change. They expect to dominate in the middle of the park and uh, Shields has been very, very uh, a big part of that shall we say, and, um, and I think he could have a, an influence this second half, you know, they haven't been able to dominate in, in the middle of the park and get it to wide areas, so obviously the, the change, they're hoping to, to make that dominance pay now with the extra numbers in midfield. Well, Dundalk have a corner within a minute of the restart, and they have a go! What a start for Dundalk, twice over. It's a super ball put into a dangerous area and they've attacked it well. And Massey, who's uh, he is dangerous, he's not one of the biggest, but he's got a good spring, he attacks the ball well. He did it there, aimed his header towards the far post. There wasn't a Shamro Rovers player on that far post. And it's gone past Highland, could do nothing about it. In 46 minutes of football, has doubled his tally for the season. Started the day on two. Now he's got four for the season. And those, the only two he scored in the League Cup this season. And they both come in the final. Dundalk to Shamrock Rovers one. There have been some words, I imagine, at half time from Stephen Kenny. Inspirational ones. But now they have to defend. And the cross from Waters, gathered by 
Gabriel Saba. Well, it's a perfect response to uh, say what was a disappointing probably last half an hour of the first half there. And they've come out with renewed vigour. Stephen would have had a, one or two strong words, I'm sure, but the players would have been disappointed themselves. They would know. And that's a great response within a, a couple of minutes of the restart. Way by Madden for the throw. And Dundalk have started this second half the way they've started the first, very strongly, and in goal scoring style. That's just what he ordered. No movement yet off the Shamrock Rowers bench. It's another corner, Daryl Horgan's won this one. To be swung in from their left-hand side instead of the right that yielded the lead goal. 65 goals they've scored in the league so far this season and 28 league games. And a free header! from a set piece we've said all night long that both teams possess wicked set piece takers and it was it was whipped in but it was a free header it was poor defending in the box again and the team defending has paid for it but it was a well directed header towards the far post again nobody on that far post and it sailed in and now Shamra Rose have a mountain to climb two goals in as many minutes both from set pieces one from one from the left. What did you say at half time, Stephen Kenny? Tom Dorker absolutely flying. I was talking to him just before the game and he said he hadn't actually realised that he was one win away from equaling the all time manager's record set by Tony O'Connor. What a fantastically successful player and later manager he was. Like the two managers today, uh, a trophy-laden career. Good shot, quick layoff by Horgan, and what a ball, and what space here for Massey! He's on a hat-trick, pulls it back, chance for four, almost four, it fell for Horgan. Very, very good save by Highland, and you know what, it had to be. It was impromptu, it was point-blank. Just managed to keep it out. Well, it was a good save with his feet for sure, but that would have been game set and match, I feel. Dane Massey has been allowed to go forward and impose himself just with Shields coming into that midfield. It's freed up Towel to get forward. It's freed up the fullbacks to, to go and get forward. And I think there's a real statement there, and I think Pat Fenland's got to do something about it by responding in a positive way as well. Well, those aren't the defensive standards that Pat Fenlon sets. And it's the first time since he has taken charge that Shamrock Rovers have conceded three. It's actually the first time they've conceded two. And as a manager, it's, it's galling when you, when you, you give away a set-piece needlessly or, or you, you don't defend from a corner that, you know, three headers. It's criminal. I think Pat Hoban there wasn't sure of the movement he made, but he, uh, there was no one within three or four yards of him. Flicked away by McPhail of Shamrock Rovers. They still have a lot of time. They have 40 minutes to try and claw themselves back into this cup final, but they're 3-1 down. And the same towards Hoban again, who's now scored 20 goals in all competitions this season. And that was his first in the League Cup, having already scored one in the FAI Cup, in the Satanta Sports Cup, and in the Europa League. I think it's fair to say the latter competition they don't want to be in next season. 
we've talked about the goals that uh, has been spread around the Dundalk team this season. But Pat Hoban with chipping in with 20 odd. I think you need to have a, a, a goal scorer of that ilk if you're going to go on figure in the uh, towards the end of a season. Pat Hoban has been regular goal scorer over the last two seasons, and um, I know through having one or two conversations that he is being looked at uh, across the water. For someone like Pat to have come to have sampled it at Bristol City, come back. He's gone and proved his doubt was wrong and he may be ready to go back again to have a second crack at it. He actually came to Dundalk from Merview United. It was his second spell there. The former Galway lead club prior to returning here. And Dundalk are rampant right now. Shamrock Rovers tracking back feverishly. And the spectacular almost made it four for Richie Towell. And again, just that simple movement of, of, of Shields coming in, allowing Towell the freedom to get forward and go and try and get it onto the end of uh, Pat Hoban's flicks and the way he holds the ball up. And I think it, it just gives them a lot more freedom and it gives Dundalk that more, uh, that more fluidity to their game. It's a dimension of the game that they didn't have first half and has made them look a lot better at the start of this second half. Well, it's been a spectacular second half so far for Dundalk. Well, had they put that one by uh, Massey away where he's breaking through on the left-hand side, that would have been three goals in four minutes, which almost matched what Arsenal did earlier today. Well, what they have done is they've taken up their work rate a notch as well. Um, whether Stephen would have been happy with the, with the work rate in the first half, that has been a, a symbol of what they've done over the last couple of years. And it's got them a certain amount of success. And uh, at any level, you cannot... Good delivery towards the back post. And it was a fine header by Kenneth, but he was just overbearing on Shields. Get the header in, which Sava saved anyway. Yeah, so you just can't overemphasize how much hard work is a, has got to be a, a quality that your team uh, possesses. Dundalk have had that in abundance over the last couple of years. Shamrock Rovers free kick. They try and drag themselves back into this League Cup final. Launched forward by Madden towards the penalty spot. There are plenty up. Hawkins short one, gained by Towel. Used his physicality, I'm sure, there. Yeah, those little 1v1 battles all over the park, they're just starting to get um, the better of Shamrock Rovers. I think it's important, yes, it's a team game, but you do have those little individual battles all over the park. And if seven or eight of the, those 1v1 battles go your way, generally the game will go your way. One by Rory Higgins in the air, who, as things stand, looking for his sixth League Cup winners medal today and that is the first yellow card of this League Cup final. It's for the challenge on Richie Towell. Yeah, really important now that uh, frustration doesn't get the better of these Shamarose players. I don't think there was anything in that challenge looking at it. You know, he didn't know where Richie Towell was and he got his arms up to protect himself. There wasn't a, a flinging of the elbow and I think McPhail can find himself a little bit unlucky with picking up a yellow card, but having said that, frustration can get the better of them now. They've gone 3-1 down. The game's not gone their way this first 10 minutes of the second half, but there's plenty of time left to go and get, uh, get these guys the deficit back. They'll find it difficult doing it with 10 players on the park. 
that's directly below our commentary position, which is rocky at the moment. Towel was rocked somewhat there. And Graham Kelly has uh, pretty much let the game flow. A little bit of blood, which means a change of shirt and a change of number two for Richie Towel. Obviously, there was some sort of major contact. Well, the last two games between these two, very, very tight. Nil-nil, quite a door encounter in Tala in the drawn FAI Cup quarter-final. And then Dundalk leading this one late through Patrick Hogan's strike, which was his 19th goal of the season. And then that very late brace by Shepard taking the honours and sending them into the last four of that competition. They love their manager here. They've sent three into the area, but that's well gathered in the end by Highland and didn't need a lot of work to deny the free kick from Rory Higgins. Luke Byrne, pretty much a regular this season, having played four bows and would have been in the uh, under eight side towards the end of uh, Pat Fenland's term at Daily Mat, which the chief executive John Delaney is looking to get redeveloped potentially around Euro 2020 as a as a boost to the domestic game. Great boot of the domestic game in this final. A massive crowd. Hogan. Short layoff, Towel is there, but he's offside, and Hoban found him. And the combination so swift and threatening again. Well, you look at the game now, and you look at Shama Rose, now the onus is on them, they must go forward, they must try and create things. Um, they are going to leave themselves a little bit open at the back, maybe, and uh, Dundalk being a, a quick counter-attacking team at times, they could find themselves, um, you know, on the back foot, Shama Rose, and the... Now the back two, it could be, they could be under a, a fair bit of work, but they, they do have to take chances as the game goes on, and things will start to open up. Finn beaten in the air by Sean Gannon again, twice over. Here's Brand. Good work by Craig. a few encouraging quite successful years in Scotland despite never really being with what you'd call a big club he had big, big successes across his time throw for Shamrock Rovers when does Pat Fenlon decide to make a change soon surely you know, with players on the bench of the, the quality of McCabe and Kilduff and Dean Kelly, there is the firepower there. Um, when does he use them? When does he bring them in and introduce them into the game? I would say um, fairly soon if they're looking to get back into the game. Kelly's brother Alan has also officiated in this final previously. There are two balls on the pitch, incidentally, so that's why the game's been called dead. His brother Alan officiated the 2000 final between Derry and Limerick and is now in the MLS. Don't take selfies with him around.
Shields was up. This flick by uh, Irvin just a mite too long. Kick right under the nose of the fourth official. I think you look at the Dundalk players, they are visibly noticeable that they've stepped it up this second half, the way they're closing down, the intensity, and causing mistakes from the Shamrock Rovers players and, uh, and getting their joy for it. McFell. <laughs> Towel is aggrieved. <laughs> Might have had reason. Shepherd. <laughs> Luke Byrne short again towards O'Connor, Finn looking to get a breakthrough in this second half for Rovers, he's got the cross in excellently conjured strong head away by Rossiter Burner support from Finn close by Chance to take them on, continue the run. McPhail playing it through, O'Connor's there. And sits to the Shamrock Rovers fans in the new temporary stand behind the goal. Which may be here for a few weeks in the title run it. But it's better from Shamrock Rovers there. There was patience to the build-up. They moved it from side to side. They managed to get the, uh, the spare man, which is O'Connor at this time, and a little bit better execution of the, the final shot. But it, uh, it certainly rocked them the first first couple of minutes of the second half, suddenly going from 1-0 down to 3-1, and uh, it's important that they settle. And the flag stayed down, but then it went up. Hogan puts the ball in the net for a fourth time. Denied by Alan Sherlock on this near side. on again led by Shields but well, the last breakaway didn't quite work tonight by the offside flag one certainly worth taking a second look at Burn did well to hold it up headed out by Gartland Looks like Kieran Kilduff is being uh, ready at this stage, possibly to come on for Shamrock Rovers. Doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, I, th I think a, a bigger man to try and trouble those Dundalk players, the defenders there. Balls have got to come into the box, and someone like Kilduff could really uh, make his presence known, but they do need a change, I would feel now. 25 minutes to go. Not managed an effort on goal, I don't apart from O'Connor a couple of minutes ago. Controlled by Madden. Well, 3-1, Shamrock Row as well. Under the cost at this stage. 
and a change coming for them very shortly. up again and cut out by Simon Madden for the throw and that'll be the opening for the introduction in this League Cup final of Kieran Kildoff and he's going to replace Kieran Marty Waters here midway through the second half Kildoff who's the joint top scorer for Shamrock Rovers this season with nine he scored two in the League Cup including the second and clincher in the semi-final. Against Cork, quarter-final rather. And immediately I think he'll go up top with uh, with Shepard. I think they'll go 4-4-2. Ronan Finn making his way out here on the left-hand side. So going two for two up against the, uh, the Dundalk centre-halves. It's a positive move. And one that Pat Fanon will hope to uh, to reap some dividends from. Must deliver the ball into the box, though. This is strength. Ball's coming into the box. Go and attack it. It's got to feed that. Well, Dundalk with their three goals, but they could have had a fourth. And just when the ball was played, well, potentially that looked level. Certainly, Alan Sherlock was in line with the naked eye he looked on side to me. That was uh, first time around anyway. It was one of those that goes under the category of marginal. Like uh, Andy Mountney will be a second change to come shortly for Dundalk, another uh, former Murphy United old boy. He had a very successful uh, junior and schoolboy career. Yeah, he's a strong boy. He's uh, he's got he's full of energy. He'll be uh, lethal on the counter attack. He'll be quick to join in. Maybe one of the wider men, or even Higgins from the midfield there, but it's, uh, he can play central or, or out wide. Hanging cross, dangerous one, but well played by Gabriel Salva. I think if they're going to get joy from those wide areas, crosses have got to be fizzed in rather than uh, looped into the box where uh, Salva is capable of coming out and claiming. One feature tonight, you know, Madden loves to get forward. He hasn't done it this, this, uh, this game, really. Not been able to, he's been pinned back by the presence of Horgan. Byrne always likes to get forward as well. It's been noticeable that they haven't been able to do it. Launched away first time by Highland. Shamrock Rovers looking to make another change themselves. This will be Gary McKay, who they'll be bringing on shortly. Changes abounding soon. Here's Finn. Rovers have made one change already today. yet to make their second is McPhail only really Shamrock Rovers had won obvious opportunities since going three and one down that was the strike over the top from Sean O'Connor Shepard is starting to come quite deep 
Kendall Duff was hanging around in the edge of the area and will continue to do so. Finn was thinking about a quick one. He hesitated and so did Shepard. He's brought down by Brian Gartland. And the change will come now, by the way, for Shamrock Rovers before the free kick. As off will come Ronan Finn. The party of the scene to be replaced by Gary McCabe who scored in last season's League Cup final against Drogheda. One of the quieter games for Ronan Finn. It was at UCD when they reached the League Cup final in 2005, his first season there, when they lost to Stephen Kenny's Derry City, which was the first live TV League Cup final. So few options were open there for Sean O'Connor and he's launched it wide in the end, nobody up for it. And not in the right place anyway. No, with chances like that to put the ball into the box, into dangerous areas, you were looking for a, a good quality of delivery on that occasion, O'Connor couldn't find that, but Sean Rovers have really got to get Gary McCabe into this game straight away. 17 minutes plus added time to get this back and McCabe has got the quality to get on the ball and to unlock defences. Well, there'll be a card here, Patel. And it's yellow. And it's a card apiece as he went in very hard over on the far flank. Yeah, it's one of those where you, you're trying to block the ball, but you know that if you, you don't connect with it, the opposition's foot will do when he's following through. And it's a nasty one, that, that you can get on the top of your foot. One that you know is probably coming, you brace yourself, but can do nothing about. Scored twice against Shamrock Rovers in the first leg of their Satanta Sports Cup semi-final earlier this year. Three of the wins for them in the six meetings so far this season. And they're on the brink of making it four out of seven. Only Shamrock Rovers' victory today against the Lily Whites this year, and then a spot in the last four of the FAI Cup. Killed off in the area, went down. Shepard had touched it on. It's an awkward fall more than anything else. Yeah, I don't think Graham Kelly would have been too interested in that. And he wasn't, but uh, you know, you, you'll shout for anything at the moment in this position. 3 1 down, 15 minutes to go. Duff was looking to repay the compliment for Shepard that time. Couldn't quite release him though. McPhail. Rovers throw. There were some home complaints about it, and there might be more if Rovers do something here. Kildoff, goal! Goal for 3 2, and they're back in this cup final. The protest is still coming towards referee and the assistant on the far side, but Shamrock Rovers won't care. Kildoff has scored, and that's what he was brought on the pitch to do. Yeah, that is a superbly worked goal as well down the right hand side. It was one touch football. McPhail playing it and then making the run into the box. Managed to get a right footed cross, and that's what Kildoff has been brought on to do. Feed him, and he'll generally get on the end of it and put it on target. He was there in the middle of the six-yard box. Keeper had no chance, and all of a sudden, game on again. His tenth goal of the season. Fine cross on the right-hand side. Back in it at 3-2. Dundalk looking for a fourth to finish it for once and for all, and they almost got it through Hoven. Set up by Towel there. And the game is back, back up again. Yeah, good response from Dun Dundalk there. Straight back on the attack. Richie Towell, energy getting down the channel. Chance to get the uh, the ball into the box there and uh, good defending last ditch just to avert the danger. Good corner swung in and met with great uh, ferocity. 
by McGuinness. Great first time strike. Well, Dane Massey for the first time has scored two goals in a competitive game and he's had a couple of chances for the hat-trick here, which obviously would be a landmark as well for him today. For the last 10 minutes, Will, I feel as though Dundalk have just sat on the lead a little bit, you know, rather than going for, for the jugular and going for uh, to try and get the fourth and the killer. They probably sat back and tried to soak up a bit of pressure and maybe pay for that. Well, Higgins is down. Free kick for Dundalk, chance to get a bit of respite. And the challenge was very, very, very late by Kieran Kilduff. Yeah, and I think you saw a shot of Pat Finlan there to, just to calm down. And I think it's silly things like that. They've just got themselves back into the game, and that was very late, extremely late. Well, the Rory Higgins is to win a sixth League Cup winners medal. He'll spend the last 12 minutes watching on from the bench as he's replaced by John Magny. Former Ireland under 16 and under 18 international. Another Murphy United old boy won the Super League with Ballon Mayo in 2010 and the Kennedy Shield three years before that. Shamrock Rovers taking off Carl Shepard and replacing him with Dean Kelly. Third and final change for them. Trouble in the air again for Craig Highland, but he survived. Final throw of the dice from Pat Fenland. Two fresh legs up, uh, up top, or three fresh legs, including McCabe, but uh, Kildorf and, and Kelly. Could be a, a partnership that can just try and unlock this defence once more and get them back on terms. But a fall for McPhail, who... Struck it strongly, too strongly. They have responded well, Shamrock Rovers, to the disappointment of going 3-1 down. They have had the fair share of the, the last 15, 20 minutes and, uh, and got the reward for it. Dundalk perhaps paying a little bit for, for sitting, on, sitting on that lead. You don't blame them. They've got one hand on the trophy, or feel as though they perhaps have. Well, that going into touch. So it's a throw for Dundalk. And they certainly would feel previously that they should have had a throw just before the goal. And, well, it looked like it certainly came off Craig last. Throw for Shamrock Rovers instead, and they scored. Let's put Shamrock Rovers back in this cup final. Short throw for Hoban. Only really McMillan waiting in the middle. And he won't get it because it ran beyond Massey. Still... About nine minutes for Shamrock Rovers to save themselves, potentially. Extra time and penalties if required today. Craig stuck in a leg but couldn't force it out any further. Two thousand and seven, the last time that this final had extra time, and Derry won it at the Brandywell. Wonderful skill. Massey has found Hoban. Oh, so close from Tal. And that would have done it. That nearly sealed it, but uh, great feat again by Massey. Getting himself, finding himself in the opposition box. Manages to offload it. Comes to Richie Tal. 
side foot with the right foot, and that was inches away when you when we see that. I don't think there was too much that Highland could have done with that one if it was on target. Glorious skill started by Massey and almost finished superbly by Towel, and there's no doubt that Highland was beaten there. Well, the highest scoring draw we've had in a League Cup final involved on Dork, but that was a two-legged affair against Cork Alberts back in 1978. It was their first League Cup win, it finished four all, but that was across 180 minutes and penalties. from a man who won the Satanta Sports Cup with Shamrock Rovers in 2011. And like uh, our fourth official today, Dean Kelly, reached the third round of the FAI Cup with a non-league side, Cromlin. Uh, Ken Hennessy, who's holding the board now, did it with the All United in 2001. And it's Mark Rossiter, whose League Cup final is drawing to a close. Pat Hoban's coming in as well just to get some advice. Well, it looks rather than going for, for an extra striker to try and kill the game off. A change in the back four, Andy Boyle has, has been a, a mainstay of the back four all season. He's perhaps been brought on now to, to make sure that we have done not wrap this game up. Andy Boyle, wearing four, has only missed one league game all season. He's never won the League Cup, he's only played in one Senior Cup final before. That was the Satanta Sports Cup final in which they were beaten in May. McGuinness, quality ball across. Shot by Craig, support from O'Connor in the middle if needed, Craig located him. McPhail on the inside. Good work by McCabe. Now can they work something here? O'Connor launching it in. They three waiting in the middle. All the front men had moved in and they're staying there. Killed off. Good ball back. Oh, what a chance for Craig and he couldn't put it away. Yeah, he was just off balance there as it uh, came to him. It was a good build up again. A little hold up play from, from Killed off. Laid off. 23, 24 yards out, Craig to be hitting the target, but um, they're still pushing, still pressing, looking for this equaliser now. So they may have to take one or two chances. Shields launched it up and he was fouled in the process. That landed inside the area. Good timing for Dundalk, but he ended up being fouled at the end of it. They have the free kick. been going out but Byrne whipped it out bit of force in that back pass from Kenner giving Highland not much time to think all three changes made by Shamrock Rovers now same for Dundalk really tightened up in the last 10 minutes or so and that strike by Kieran Kildoff giving Shamrock Rovers a big lifeline headed dangerously in the centre for McCabe can't get there almost fell again for McCabe towards the back post just too high beyond everybody and the free kick will be Dundalk's for the foul by Byrne on the near side.
good work to get the cross in. It was deep to the bottom, the far post, and uh, but it was just going over Burns' head there and uh, couldn't quite get there. Tom Dog two minutes away in what's been a really memorable League Cup final. I think it's been full of quality football, and uh, but the occasion can have an effect on that. I think the pitch can certainly have an effect on that, but um, there's been no shortage of hard work, spirit, excitement. The crowd's been good. Uh, it's made for a good occasion. Plenty of goals, and, um, you know, we can look back on this. I'm, I'm sure I will, we will be able to. It was a, a good occasion. Highest scoring cup final since 2008 when at Ferry Carey Park, Derry City beat Wexford Newts by six goals to one. A huge amount of stands up there for the occasion, about four or five thousand. That's an excellent crowd in this League Cup final in Dundalk, which may still have a bit to run yet. Well, it depends on Shamrock Rovers now. Exquisite ball inside, and Kildoff arrives at the back post, but his first touch was too strong. And it's incessant Shamrock Rovers pressure now. Well... Let's have a quick shout for Man of the Match. We're in the 90th minute. Yeah, I think there's been one or two outstanding performances, but um, I think there's only one for me that stands out above the others. Two goals, Dane Massey. I don't think he's put a foot wrong defensively and certainly has, uh, has made a, a positive effect in the, uh, the other end. So, Dane Massey. So, Dane Massey, the EA Sports Man of the Match. First time that he scored twice in a senior competitive game. Four minutes of added time we'll have at the end of this League Cup final. Sent forward by Kenner. Rovers have got everybody in the Dundalk half now. McCabe holding it up. Got the cross in. Deep and dangerous and a good diving. Action by Boyle to get it out but not away. Okay, in again, and towel with the block for a corner for Shamrock Rovers, and it's at the end where their fans are. They have belief. And big Jason McGuinness going up as well. He's already got one goal to his, his name this evening. I think I'd be uh, sending him forward, keeping him forward. I know he scored a couple of late goals for me when I was at Sligo Rovers there, and uh, he can be potent, but um, he's not got too long now to make an effect. Well, Shamrock Rovers have got five up here, six up for the corner. A few words being shared by referee Graham Kelly, who's a fourth official in the 2011 FEI Cup final. Paul Cook's last game at Chargers Sligo. That finished in penalties. Well, this and evaded everybody. And Shamrock Rovers are calling for a penalty kick. They won't get one. Oh, there was a lot going on in the box there. The ball was always going to be put underneath the bar. There was little 1v1 battles all, all inside that six-yard box there, and it's almost impossible to, to see what went on there. I think I saw Luke Fern mouthing handball. And if I was in that same position, I think I'd be shouting the same too. Dundalk are on the brink, but they're not yet there. Craig Highland looking to launch this as far as he can. He's got it in towards the Dundalk area, and the flick on came, and it came from McGuinness. 
and he's screaming at Gary McCabe not to be in the box, knowing that he's going to win that, and that any little knockdown, any little flick can be capitalised on. And uh, Gary was on his heels rather than anticipating the flick. Yeah, they three men there, all bunched on the edge of the area. McInnes got a head on, and there was no one there to receive. And McInnes put the head in again, and he's won a free kick as we enter the last minute of stoppage time. That's what he can do, he can upset defenders, and uh, again, he's, he's, he's been up there 30 seconds, he's got his head on two. He's won a free kick, he's flicked one in the box. Dangerously up by McFell, and the flag is up against Shamrock Rovers, and it's offside. And that, that might just be that. And that's criminal there, you can see the line, you can see the offside line, when the ball's going to be put in, and... Um, you know, when, when you know it might be the last ball coming into the box, you keep yourself onside. The crowd can smell it now. They're nearly there. Just about 20 seconds of stoppage time to go. Rovers need to build one last attack to get it up as far as they can. It's fallen for towel instead. And they have enough men back. It was covered well by David McMillan. And that's it! The Nork have won the League Cup! Their first senior trophy in 12 years! And they've done it on their own patch! Third meeting between the Nork and Sherwood Rovers in a week. Rovers had the last laugh in the FBI Cup, but the League Cup is set. potential double well don't tell me that this uh, this trophy doesn't mean anything in the calendar of the uh, the football association of Ireland the players are rightfully overjoyed it's been a hard uh, 90 finish 95 minutes work 